Well, in the last vlog I did, I mentioned how tough the spring had been on Burfield. Really was tough going with the restrictions we got on here at the minute, but that's the way it goes. Um, so I joined the water next door, uh, but I just I just couldn't get focused on that. I just wanted to be back on Burfield. I just kept thinking of the Burfield Common and some of the other stunning fish that are down here. So, uh, so I came back uh, after about a three week break, I think, four week break, something like that. And I found that it was a lot quieter down here. You know, it, it didn't look like too many people had been fishing it too much, which was a, a really good thing. Uh, so I dropped into one of the passing swims. I, I didn't see any fish, but it, the conditions just looked spot on for it. It was one of these really hot, uh, oppressive July days. I think it was about 30 degrees. So I saw nothing in the day. I think it was just too hot for them in the daytime uh, to be up on the surface. But as soon as the, the power out of the sun dropped a little bit, they were on the surface, so I knew I was in the right place. Um, I, I'd, I'd found one spot that I fished the year before, but the other spots that I tended to fish were all weeded over. Um, so I had to resort to a, a child rig on one rod and, and another rod. I found a, a different spot, a very, very small spot. Um, not, a, not too far, and not as far out as I normally fish. Um, so I went into that night feeling quite confident. And at dawn, the following morning, uh, one of the rods that were a, bit, a little bit closer in just absolutely tore off. A screaming take and uh, resulted in a Burfield curl. Well, not the biggest fish in the world, but they're all welcome from Burfield. He weighed in at uh, 22 and a quarter pound. Ripped off at uh, about three o'clock this morning, so uh, very, very welcome and uh, hopefully I might get a couple more. It's now five in the morning and there's a couple of fish milling around on surface, so uh, we could have a chance or two. But uh, you never know at Burfield, it's a, it's a tricky old place. Let's get it back and see what happens. Now after that fish, I saw a few more fish up in the weed on the surface, just, just sort of cruising around from weed bed to weed bed. So I, I repositioned my chod, uh, put on a really light lead, and flicked it back out to where I saw the fish. And uh, I must admit, I was, I was quite tense, pacing up and down the bank, thinking, you know, did it land correctly? Is it sitting okay in the weed? Is it pulled down too far and whatever else? So I just decided, right, I'm going to go and sit in the bivy and just not look at it and ignore it and just see what happens. And um, I, I think I just lay down in my bed and five minutes later, the rod just tore off. Uh, <coughs> ran round to it, picked up the rod and I could just see bow waves flying everywhere from, uh, you know, the, the, the fish had obviously spooked and another fish had spooked off in another direction. Uh, so I picked up the rod, bent into it and it was absolutely pouring, taking line off the spool at an alarming rate. Oh, here's another Burfield carp. Absolutely tore off this one, did. In a different spot to the other one. I uh, saw a few fish showing just near a bit of weed. I couldn't find a clear spot out there at all. I wanted to position a bait from the start of the session. I couldn't find anything at all out there, so I just had to uh, put a long running shot in front of them and uh, it was in there about an hour and it ripped off with this. And when, it, when I say ripped off, it absolutely ripped off. I grabbed the spool and you know, the finger went over the line and I burnt my finger on the line. That's how, much it, that's how quickly it was taking line. But, uh, I'd say not one of the biggest in the lake, but uh, still it's a Burfield carp. After that on the second night, I managed to lose another fish. Uh, it, was, it was just a screaming take and I just picked the rod up, bump, off, straight away. I, I don't know what it was, you know, I'd, I'd used them rigs countless times before and I'd landed, um, you know, a few fish from various waters. I think it was just one of the things, I think it was just light hooks and the extra pressure uh, just resulted in a hook pull. Um, so the following week I was, I was obviously keen to get back down again. And I got back down on the Sunday, dropped back into the same swim again and it was more or less the same sort of scenario. Nothing was happening in the day, but as soon as the power dropped out of the sun, um, the fish just started to appear on the top. And uh, I knew I was on fish, I knew I was in with a good chance. Um, so I did the night, I had nothing at all in the night at all. And then I received a phone call at 7 o'clock in the morning to say that my kids had been playing up and uh, they kept my missus awake all night. Um, so she was a little bit tired for work, so uh, unfortunately I had to go home and uh, deal with the kids. Um, and just after I took the phone call, the fish appeared back in the weed beds again and I could see them going from weed to bed to weed bed. And I thought let's, let's just give it another couple more hours, I didn't have to be home until well, as long as I was home for three to pick the kids up from school, it wasn't an issue. So I flicked the rod back out to the, um, <clears throat> back out to the weed bed where I caught from the previous week and it was out there for about half an hour, the bobbin smashed into the top, line started going off the, uh, off the clutch. And I bent into it, and same, same as the previous fish, just dump dump, come off, 
you know, it's these sort of things happen with chods, especially long running chods, but I was, I was still a little bit gutted. And then about half past ten in the morning, the rod I'd recast at long range just ripped off the well the bobbin hit the top and then just started taking line. So I bent into it and it, it weeded me up more or less straight away and I was just bringing in a big pile of weed bed and every now and then I'd feel a bit of a kick. Um, and then it'd charge off a little bit and free itself a weed and then it'd, it'd pick up another weed bed and it, it took ages, it must have took about 20 minutes to, to get the fish anywhere near close to me. Um, and once I got it about 30 yards out, it kicked, it kicked free of the weed. Um, and it was level with this snag that's just out in the water, it's like a tree stump and it, apparently it's quite nasty underneath. And the fish just kicked free of the weed in that, thrashed on the surface and headed straight towards this uh, tree stump. So I needed, knew I needed to clamp down on it, so I put the rod to one side and just, just bent the rod round into it and unfortunately the hook pulled and um, yeah I was a little bit gutted I, I could see it was a, a much better fish than the, the 220s I'd had I mean I don't really want to put a weight on it but um, you know it was it was easily 30 uh, but it was a mirror so I knew it wasn't the, the big common so I was a little bit gutted having to go home after those two fish losses I, I did manage to get out for a, for a quick night later in the week you know drove 135 miles just for a night um, <laughs> and again I lost another fish which was absolutely gutting, you know. Coming all that way just for one night and, and managing to lose my only bite of the session was, was a little bit wounded. But, you know, never mind, these things happen. Um, but it, things were really starting to, to happen in that swim. Uh, the only trouble was I could only really fish it up until about 9, 10 o'clock in the morning because the boat was an absolute nightmare coming through. But those sessions were the last ones I could, I could do properly for a while. I had the Corder Academy the following week. I went down to Biddle's Wade and then Teach some, uh, teach some kids how to fish and we had a great time there, we had, we had plenty of fish between us and all the lads caught and they all enjoyed themselves. Um, the following week it was my turn to, to take well, one of my kids fishing, uh, Jamie the six year old. Uh, we came down to Burfield but it's, I couldn't fish where I wanted to fish um, and I soon realised that I wasn't on fish but I couldn't do a great deal about it, you know, I had two people's kit and a, a six year old to look after so I couldn't really walk around and move to the places I want to. Um, the following week I had Jamie with me again so I opted to fish another lake nearby uh, but then the following week I was, I was back to doing my own fishing again so I got down and had a really good walk around, I got, I got down here uh, about 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning and I checked out every single spot I could think of around here, I checked out the open water spots, nothing was showing I checked out every single little bay, channel, island, anywhere that I'd seen fish before, anywhere that I thought the conditions looked good for them and I, I just didn't see anything at all um, so at the end of the day I, I, I stopped off at the, the lake nearby just to have a quick look and as soon as I went through the gate one just had and shouldered it out in this spot. So I, I did the night on that lake instead of Burfield but all the time I was just keep thinking of Burfield and I think what am I on here for, I just want to be on Burfield and want to give myself a chance of um, a Burfield carp. So I, I packed up about 10 o'clock in the morning and once again I was back walking around the lake again. And it took me most of the day, but eventually I did find a couple of fish just sitting in the bottom of this little bay. And I'd baited a couple of areas, um, you know, previously. It's just, I've got, I've got probably half a dozen little spots that I bait, you know, close in as I walk around, just a handful of bait here, a handful of bait there. And these two fish weren't a million miles away from, um, from the area that I was baiting. So I, I dropped in the swim and I was lucky enough to have a, a 26 pounder that night. And it was really nice to get it, you know. it's. Uh, it's when you spend that much time walking around, it, it is nice to get the rewards. Um, so the following day, I stayed in the swim, and, and by dinner time, you know the, the, the two fish were on the surface again. Uh, so obviously, I'd, I'd not had one of those, um, and it was it, the two fish that I was seeing regular were, were probably low thirties, or that's what I'd sort of weight I'd put on them. Um, and then it was joined by a, a probably mid twenty, um, and then I saw these two other fish turn up in the swim. One was about 12, 14 pounds, and the other one was a bit special. It was, it was a big common, really thick across the back and, and, and long, and it was. Well, I was, I was, I was debating whether it was the big girl or not, and you know, it went next to the fish that I'd estimated at 30 pounds, and it, it wasn't twice the size, but it, it was, it, it was getting towards that weight, so I, I felt sure that it was. I felt sure that it was the Burfield Common, uh, and it, it was nice to see her, really nice to, to, to finally see her, because I'd, I'd not seen her before, not definitely anyway, I'd seen a few big shadows, but I wasn't quite sure. 
the evening passed without any sort of action, but the fish were still in the area. I could hear them. Uh, I could hear the odd one sort of head and shoulder out in in, in the lake. Uh, and at half past three in the morning, I had a take, but unfortunately the fish was gone before I got to the rod. Basically, I, I wasn't fishing particularly far out. I was fishing locked up because there were some snags down to my left hand side. Um, but the fish had sort of picked up my bait, swung out in front of me, and because I was fishing on a tight clutch and the fish, the, actually the rod was pointing at the fish, it banged its head and, well, it must have banged its head and there was nowhere to go and uh, it shed the hook but the, the lead had come off and everything, I mean, it could have been a tench I suppose but I don't know, could have been a carp as well. Um, so I repositioned the rod, um, feeling a bit gutted about the situation, uh, but then two hours later the rod was away again uh, and uh, the fish powered off into a weed bed and Eventually, after a bit of to and fro, and I got the whole lot moving and um, slipped the net under a weed bed, and I started parting weed. And uh, happy to see that there was a fish there. Well, this is the result of two days of searching around Burfield to try and find fish. They're just not showing themselves this year like the afternoon previous years, and they've been an absolute nightmare. But uh, after a couple of days of walking around. I managed to find two fish sitting at the bottom of a bay. And after a couple of nights fishing, I managed to get one. 30 pounds, two ounces. So, uh, really happy with that. It's normally the other way around. It's normally uh, 29, 40, but uh, I'm not complaining this time at all. So after I put that fish back, it sort of proved I was, I was getting the weights right um, with the fish that were in the swim. So, you know, I was even more certain that uh, I was looking at the Burfield common. Um, and it, it sort of got me thinking a little bit. You know, the, the, the 230s and the mid-20s seem to be hanging around together quite a lot, especially in the day. And the common and the little double seem to be hanging around a little bit. So after catching the 30, I knew that that fish hadn't been spooked by the, the sort of aborted take. And it probably had been with the other two fish. So that kind of got me thinking to what the aborted take could have been. Um, I suppose I'll never know for sure, but could have had a chance at the Burfield Common, or a double, but uh, <laughs> I'm not complaining. I caught a 30 pounder and uh, I'm really starting to get amongst these Burfield fish now and uh, yeah, it's a nice little bit of run of form. And I'm starting to get a few other things going down here as well, so it's, it's all going well at the minute.